few years ago when I first started getting into the Bible version issue, I was just buying books right and left and studying as much as I could on the subject. And uh, one of the books that I bought early on, which is one of the finest out there exposing the NIV as being a corrupt perversion, is this book here, If the Foundations Be Destroyed, by, uh, who's by, Chick Salaby, I think the guy's name is. Yes, Chick Salaby. And just phenomenal. I mean, really, really a good book. And um, he brings up a point in here about how the, there's a, a reference, there are seven references in the Bible to Jesus Christ basically being the priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, and there are seven references, and the NIV removes one of them, which drops the number from seven down to six. And I thought about that, and I thought, well, that's kind of interesting, because God, uh, the number of perfection, the number of God that's most associated with God in the Bible is seven. And you can see that, you can study it, it's a big issue, very interesting how God will use this number seven time and time again. But if you know the book of Revelation, if you know Bible prophecy, you understand what the number six means, and specifically 666. So I had this interesting thought. I thought, well, wouldn't that be something if the NIV, being as I believe it is a satanic Bible, that it would actually have the number of the beast, 666, in relationship to specific names and titles for Jesus Christ. And so I began to look into it, and I studied it, and I've come up with the conclusion. And I'm going to show it to you today, okay? I'm going to show you instances where the King James Version has the number 7 and where the NIV only removes 1 to drop the number down to 6. First of all, we have the Word, capital W, the manifest Word of God, okay? The references are, and you can check these out for yourself, get a King James Version and an NIV and compare them. John chapter 1 verse 1 has this capital W word three times. And it's important to, to note that there's a difference between capital W and lowercase w. Whenever you're writing or something and you're talking about the word of God as in the written word, you should always make it a lowercase w. I know a lot of people want to be reverent with the scriptures and so they'll, they'll make it a capital W. But that turns it into Jesus Christ, okay? And of course the, the two are very close, but the fact is you should be making it a lowercase w. Um, so there are three references. The first three references to the capital W word are in John chapter 1, verse 1. The next one is John 1, 14. After that, you have 1 John 1, 1, then 1 John 5, verse 7. I'll get back to that in a minute. And Revelation 19, verse 13. Okay, now the NIV has all of them in except for 1 John 5, 7. And, of course, you have the big controversy there, the Johannine comma, or whatever they call it. The fact is that there is plenty of manuscript support for it, not as much as other passages of Scripture, whatever, but it was quoted, 1 John 5, 7 was quoted by a lot of the early church fathers. There's plenty of evidence there that it should be in the King James Bible, okay? The new versions do not have justification to take it out. All right, and, and if they do, you say, well, I think that they do. I'll stand by the new versions. Okay, then that drops the number down to six, referring to the capital W, the Word of God, Jesus Christ. So instead of seven, the perfect number, here in the King James Bible, you have six, the number of a man, according to the, the Word of God. Either one's going to tell you that, that it's the number of a man, 666. Let's continue on. Word number two is the mediator. Okay, and the references are Galatians chapter 3, verse 19, and then you have two references to the mediator in Galatians chapter 3, verse 20. It appears two times in one verse in the King James Version. The NIV takes the second reference out. The other four uh, then are 1 Timothy 2, 5, which is very important, Hebrews 8, 6, Hebrews 9, 15, and Hebrews 12, 24. So again, why is the NIV taking out one reference to Jesus Christ? So, now let's go on to the next one. I'll get back to that other point in a minute. I mentioned this earlier. After the order of Melchizedek, 
though that wording appears seven times in the King James Bible. And these references are Psalm 110, verse 4, Hebrews 5, 6, Hebrews 5, 10, Hebrews 6, 20, Hebrews 7, 11, 7, 17, and 7, 21. Okay, the NIV has all of those in except for the last one. Hebrews 7, chapter 7, verse 21, the NIV removes it. So you see, you have the King James Version with three titles for Jesus Christ, and there are seven references to each of those three titles. So you have Jesus Christ in here is 777. And the Jesus, the Christ, I should say the Antichrist, of this book here is 666. Right there. Proven. Proven fact. And you say, well, that's just a coincidence. Yeah, well, coincidence does not appear in the Bible, by the way. It's not a Bible word. Conspiracy does, but coincidence does not. You want to see something else, though, that's interesting? Look up the word Jehovah. Okay? There are seven references to the word Jehovah in the King James Bible. A holy name for God, a very holy name for God. Seven times it appears in the King James Bible. Guess how many times in the NIV? Zero. They took all of them out. You see, this is an Antichrist Bible here. Okay? This is not a legitimate uh, book. All right, unless you, you know, you're a Satanist or something. But let me just say something else. Think about the three words there, the 777, the seven references to each of those three words. Think about them and think who would have the motivation to want to remove one of each of those. Okay, first you have the word. Well, who's against the word of God more than anybody else? Who tried to suppress it? Who burned it? Who killed people? Burned them at the stake for translating the Word of God into the English language. Who did that? Roman Catholic Church. They're the biggest enemy of the written Word of God of this book. They're not the enemy of this book. Just the King James Bible. Okay. Word number two, mediator. Well, the Roman Catholic Church is obviously against that too. They don't like the thought of there being one mediator between God and man because that means you don't need the Pope or the cardinals, or the bishops, or the priests, or the archbishops, or whoever else. You don't need them. You have a mediator, Jesus Christ, that you deal with God through Jesus Christ, and no man present. So they don't like that. So they would attack that too. And third, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Speaking of the priesthood, Jesus, your high priest in heaven. Read the book of Hebrews, okay? Jesus is my high priest in heaven. I don't have a high priest here on the earth. I have older men of God, pastors and things, great, great men that God has used, that God has instructed me and he's taught me through these men, but I'm not going to confess my sins to them. Okay? I'm not going to put them up on some kind of a pedestal where I can't say, hey, I don't agree with brother so-and-so on that. And there's nobody down here, by the way, that I'm in total agreement with. All right, just to let you know that. Okay, I have my own mind. I can think independently. And my high priest, I deal directly with him. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to kneel before him and not before some dirty sinner down here on this earth. That's just the way it works. So, if you have a King James Version, no worries. You've got Jesus Christ in this book, and there are three titles for him, and each one adds up to seven. So you have Jesus Christ 777. If you have an NIV, you have a Christ in here, that adds up to 666. And you would do well to dump this satanic book right here and get a King James Bible. I did after 15 years of this. All right? You will not regret it for one second after you become a King James Bible believer. That's it. Thank you. Okay, in this video we're going to look at some of the differences between the NIV and the King James Version. A lot of people seem to think that the NIV basically says the same thing as the King James without the archaic quote-unquote language. 
uh, nothing could be further from the truth. So let's look at a couple verses. The first one that we're going to look at and compare is Exodus 3, 14. King James Version we read, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Okay, let's look at what the NIV says. God said to Moses, I am who I am. Now that's an, a direct attack against God. You see, anybody can say I am who I am. I've said it myself, personally. Okay, it's not the same as saying I am that I am. So there you have the NIV attacking God. Next, let's look at Joshua chapter 7, verses 17 through 18. Okay, the King James Version says, And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken, and he brought his household man by man, and Achan the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Okay, Zarhites and Zabdi. Let's look at the NIV. It says, Zerahites. He took the Zerahites. He had the clan of the Zerahites, not Zarhites, but the Zerahites. And Zimri, well, I thought it said Zabdi, or Zabdi in the King James Version. Okay, so the NIV says Zerahites instead of Zarhites, and Zimri instead of Zabdi. Uh, not the same thing. Okay, Joshua chapter 17, verse 1. I'm going to quickly go through a lot of these. Uh, there was also a lot for the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Joseph, to wit, for Maker, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, because he was a man of war. He was a man of war. Therefore, he had Gilead and Bashan. Okay, so you have Maker, was the father of Gilead. He was a man of war. Let's look at the NIV. Here you have Maker, M-A-K-I-R, instead of M-A-C-H-I-R. Okay, and it doesn't say he was the father of Gilead. He says he was the ancestor of the Gileadites. Okay, and then it doesn't say that he was a man of war. It says that the Makerites were great soldiers. Okay, it doesn't say the same thing as the King James Version. So you have, in the King James, you have Maker, father of Gilead. He was a man of war. NIV, Maker, M-A-K-I-R, was the ancestor of the Gileadites. And the Makerites were great soldiers. It does not say the same thing as the King James Version. Okay, let's look at another verse. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Let's look at this uh, comparison. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay, the gods that were on the other side of the flood. Okay, that means before the flood, in the days of Noah, people were serving other gods. Look at the NIV. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river. Uh, beyond the river? What does that mean? Which river? Uh, see, it just totally destroys the meaning of it. it. It destroys the fact that before the flood they were worshiping other gods. The NIV is not the same as the King James Version. Let's let, next, let's look at uh, Judges chapter 1, verse 3. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. Okay, two men speaking to each other, Judah and Simeon. Let's look at the NIV. Then the men men of Judah said to the Simeonites, their brothers, come up with us into the territory allotted to us to fight against the Canaanites. We in turn will go with you into yours. So the Simeonites went with them. So you have plural versus singular. Okay, it doesn't say the same thing. Judges chapter 4, verse 11. Now Heber the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent in, unto the plain of Zanaim, which is by Kedesh. Okay, Hobab the father-in-law of Moses. Let's look at what the NIV says. Now Heber the Kenite had left the other Kenites, the descendants of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law. 
and you see the little C there, you look down at the footnote, I didn't include it here in the video, but you look at the footnote, and it says, or father-in-law. <laughs> okay, uh, brother-in-law, father-in-law,